Have you ever wondered about the deep history of Mozambique? Picture the sunlit savannas of Mozambique. This land was vibrant with life long before European explorers set foot here. Bantu communities, adept farmers and artisans were spread across the region. Their complex societies, rich in culture and tradition, flourished for generations. Trade routes like lifelines connected them to the broader world. Gold, ivory and tragically slaves moved along these routes. Coastal cities warm by the Indian Ocean buzzed with trade. Arab dhows and Indian ships brought silks, spices and tales from far off lands. This was Mozambique, a rich tapestry woven from diverse threads, vibrant and dynamic. But change was on the horizon carried by the salty winds of the Indian Ocean. A new force driven by the quest for gold and glory was about to make its mark. The year is 1498. Vasco da Gama's Carac, a behemoth of the sea, cast a long shadow on the Mozambican coast. The Portuguese, driven by dreams of riches and a shortcut to India, had arrived. At first they came as traders, their eyes gleaming with avarice. But this facade of commerce soon crumbled, revealing a more sinister intent. The Portuguese, with their cannons and their arrogance, sought to dominate. Local rulers, caught between diplomacy and defiance, faced a stark choice. Some resisted, their spears no match for Portuguese firepower. Others collaborated, hoping to preserve their power through uneasy alliances. Thus began centuries of Portuguese influence, a period marked by exploitation and resistance in equal measure. With their foothold secure, the Portuguese tightened their grip. Mozambique, once a land of vibrant trade, became a source of wealth for the Portuguese crown. Gold, mined from the earth, filled Portuguese coffers. But it was the trade in human beings, a shameful chapter in human history, that stained Mozambique's soil with blood. Vast tracts of land were transformed into plantations. Sugarcane, a crop that thrived on the backs of slaves, became king. Mozambicans, torn from their families and their homes, toiled under the scorching sun. Resistance, though stifled, flickered like a flame in the wind. It would be many long years before that flame grew into a raging inferno. The 20th century dawned, a century that would witness the crumbling of empires. Across Africa, the winds of change were blowing. Mozambique, too, felt the stirring of discontent. A new generation, educated in the ideals of self-determination, refused to be silenced. They saw the injustice of colonial rule, the vast chasm between the haves and the have-nots. Secret meetings were held, fueled by whispers of rebellion. From these clandestine gatherings, a new force emerged, Frelimo, the front for the liberation of Mozambique. Led by the charismatic Eduardo Mondlen, Frelimo vowed to free their nation from the shackles of Portuguese rule. The whispers of dissent had grown into a roar that echoed across the land. Section 5, Beyond the Horizon, Finding Allies in the Struggle. Frelimo's leaders knew they faced a formidable foe. Portugal, though weakened, clung tenaciously to its colonial possessions. To succeed, Frelimo needed allies, nations that shared their vision of a free Mozambique. They looked beyond their borders to the wider world and found support in unexpected places. The Soviet Union, locked in a global ideological struggle with the West, saw an opportunity to advance its cause. China, too, offered assistance, eager to champion anti-colonial movements. But it was the support of other African nations, newly independent themselves, that proved invaluable. Tanzania, Zambia and others provided sanctuary, training grounds and a vital lifeline to the outside world. Section 6. To the bush, the flames of rebellion ignite. The year is 1964. After years of peaceful protest, Frelimo made a fateful decision, armed struggle. They knew the odds were stacked against them. The Portuguese army, though bogged down in other colonial wars, possessed superior firepower. But Frelimo had something far more potent, the support of the people and an intimate knowledge of their land. The war for Mozambique's soul would be fought in the bush, a David and Goliath struggle against a seemingly invincible foe. Frelimo fighters, armed with a mixture of captured weapons and assistance from their allies, launched daring raids on Portuguese outposts. They disrupted supply lines, ambushed patrols, and chipped away at the morale of the Portuguese army. 
Section 7, A Leader Falls, A Movement Strengthens Forging Ahead. Tragedy struck in 1969. Eduardo Mondlane, a Frelimo's charismatic leader, was assassinated. A bomb, disguised as a book, ripped through his Tanzanian safe house. The loss was immeasurable, a blow that threatened to fracture the movement. Fingers were pointed, accusations flew, and internal divisions threatened to derail the struggle. But from the ashes of despair rose a new leader, a man forged in the fires of revolution, Samora Machel. A skilled military strategist and a charismatic orator, Machel rallied the demoralized fighters. He understood that unity was paramount, that internal squabbles would only benefit the enemy. Under his leadership, Frelimo's resolve hardened. The fight for liberation would continue no matter the cost. Section 8. Cracks in the Facade. The Price of an Unjust War. The war in Mozambique raged on year after bloody year, leaving a trail of devastation and despair in its wake. Portugal, determined to crush the rebellion, poured resources into the conflict, deploying more troops and advanced weaponry. But the cost, both in terms of human life and financial drain, was taking its toll. The financial strain was immense and the human suffering was beyond measure. Back in Lisbon, cracks were appearing in the facade of Portuguese invincibility. The government struggled to maintain its grip on the narrative. Anti-war sentiment grew in Portugal, with citizens taking to the streets in protest, demanding an end to the senseless violence. Young men, forced to fight in a distant land for a cause they no longer believed in, returned home in body bags or bearing the invisible scars of war. The psychological trauma was profound affecting families and communities. The Portuguese people, tired of sacrificing their sons and their nation's future for a lost cause, demanded change. The collective grief and anger fueled a powerful movement for peace. The writing was on the wall, the tide was turning, the pressure for political change was mounting, signaling a pivotal moment in history. Section nine, at the negotiating table, the long road to Lusaka. This chapter delves into the intricate and arduous journey that led to a pivotal moment in history. The year 1974 brought a seismic shift in the balance of power, not just in Mozambique, but across the entire Portuguese empire. In Portugal, a bloodless coup known as the Carnation Revolution toppled the dictatorship that had clung to its colonial possessions with such tenacity. This revolution was a turning point, a moment of profound change. The new government, eager to extricate itself from the quagmire of colonial wars, opened the door for negotiations. They were determined to find a peaceful resolution to the conflicts that had drained their resources and morale. In Lusaka, Zambia, representatives from Frelimo and the Portuguese government sat down at the negotiating table. It was a historic meeting, one that carried the hopes and dreams of an entire nation. The air was thick with tension, the weight of history pressing down on their shoulders. Every word, every gesture was laden with significance, but both sides knew that a negotiated settlement was the only way to end the bloodshed and pave the way for a new Mozambique. They were committed to finding common ground, despite the deep-seated mistrust and animosity. After weeks of intense discussions, an agreement was reached. Mozambique would be free. This was not just a victory for Frelimo, but a triumph for the spirit of negotiation and peace. Section 10, Uhuru. A nation reborn, facing the dawn. June 25th, 1975. A day that would forever change the course of history for Mozambique. A day etched in the annals of history, marking the end of centuries of colonial rule and the beginning of a new chapter. The Mozambican flag, a symbol of hope and resilience, was raised for the first time. Its colors representing the bloodshed for freedom, the lush land and the bright future ahead. Samora Machel, the man who had guided his nation through the darkness, became the first president of the Free Mozambique. His leadership was a beacon of hope for a nation yearning for change. The celebrations were joyous, a testament to the indomitable spirit of a people who had fought long and hard for their freedom. Streets were filled with music, dance, and an overwhelming sense of unity, but the journey was far from over. The euphoria of independence was soon met with the harsh realities of nation building. The legacy of colonialism ran deep, leaving a nation scarred by inequality and underdevelopment. 
The wounds of the past were not easily healed. The task ahead was daunting, to rebuild a shattered nation, to heal the wounds of war, and to forge a new path for a people who had tasted the bitter fruit of oppression and emerged victorious. It required immense effort, resilience, and unity. Mozambique, reborn, faced the dawn of a new era. With hope in their hearts and determination in their souls, the people of Mozambique embarked on a journey to create a brighter future for generations to come. Thank you for joining us on this journey through Mozambique's history. If you enjoyed this video, please like to subscribe and hit the notification button to stay updated with our latest content. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so leave a comment below and let us know what you think.